League of Legends is a pretty big game, so it's no surprise many have taken inspiration from it over the years. So here are five very interesting League of Legends ripoffs. Starting with number one, League of Stickmen. Okay, this was actually one of the only ones on the list that was not a MOBA, but instead a mobile action game. The game itself is old and, well, looks old. I mean, I don't think this thing has been updated for years, but it's still downloadable, so there's that, I guess. As far as the characters go, let's just say they didn't put too much effort into being very original. In other words, they didn't give up. I mean, first up, we got Athy, a marksman who just by chance also shoots freezing arrows. Then we got BM, which the name checks out, but it's still a bit sad he couldn't even get a full name in. It also says that he can fall into a trance-like state that will heal him for quite an amount. Interesting. Next, we got Totally Not Akali, who by the way looks terrifying and also looks like they just stole Venom's face and shoved it onto her body. We got Sparta, which I mean, out of all of them feels the least bad just because it's hard for Riot to copyright actual history. Ooh, and then we got Fish, the angel of the sea and friend of human beings. Nice. Then we got definitely not Yasuo, definitely not Ari, who coincidentally charms people, never would have guessed that one. And we got Raven, now the names are even getting less creative. Then there's definitely not Vayne, who even has an SKT skin. And get this, they even have old Aurelia called Blady. Kind of shows how old this game really is. But crazy enough, it's still actually playable. I mean, the list goes on, but my favorite out of all of these has to be Bane. Bane likes carrots and murdering people with his blowgun and carrots. Oh yeah, that's great. This is the instrument of your liberation. Now, game modes wise, they're also keeping things original by having a normal, ranked, and abyss mode. And gameplay wise, it's well, fairly straightforward. You basically just fight stuff the whole time. With that being said, some of their abilities are still blatant copies of League of Legends characters. I mean, we got Ash's Q, W, E, and even her alt freezes people when they hit them. So yeah, I'm also pretty sure they just straight up took Teemo's Q sound and used it as his auto attack sound. The graphics aren't amazing in this game, but you know, for a game that's this old, it still kind of holds up, so I gotta give it some credit. Overall, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Moving on to number 2, 300 Heroes. Now, crazy enough, this game has actually been around for a while now. In fact, Video Game Donkey even did a video on this like 9 years ago. And back then, you could even play as Shrek, but now it's turned into basically an anime character MOBA. Which I guess technically Shrek is still an anime character, but I don't think he made the uh, appearance cut, sadly. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you thought League of Legends was bad when it came to making only anime characters, this one kinda takes it to a whole nother level. A level to where they actually remove everyone else. For some reason, Wally managed to squeeze his way in there, which is so random, but honestly, I'm all for it. Every game needs a Wally in it, or in this case, a Rumble knockoff. He may or may not have Rumble's exact abilities. It kinda feels like the creators felt obligated to keep Wally in just so they can tell people that their game is diverse and not just a bunch of anime girls. Anyways, as far as the gameplay goes, I have to say it actually doesn't look that bad. Now, years ago, the map UI and characters for that matter were borderline copies of League, but nowadays it's definitely a lot more original. The animations are pretty good and there's clearly a ton of characters to play ranging from Naruto to Kirito from SAO. I like how some of the items too are literally Pokeballs or sorry, Elf Balls and Master Balls. They're really just taking this anime route to a whole nother level. Something else interesting is they have a 7v7 mode, which is odd, but sure, why not? Unfortunately, I think this is only available right now in China China to avoid copyright issues, but overall, I'll give it a solid 6 out of 10. Moving on to number 3, we got D10. Okay, so this one isn't actually around anymore, but I thought I'd throw it in here just because of how ridiculous it really was. They basically took League of Legends, messed with some of the coloring, slightly modified some of the jungle monsters, and just slightly brushed up some of the champions and basically called it good. I mean, look at this. They used almost an exact copy of Summoner's Rift. The champions or heroes were probably the biggest difference, and when I say biggest, I mean that in the smallest possible way. I mean, Elf of the Forest looks oddly familiar to Soraka, and that was definitely a rumble alt, and that was definitely a misfortune alt. They had Vigar's Cage, they had Ash, which I'm like 99% sure they just copy and pasted her from Leek and turned her a bit more blue, but I guess they gave her a Vlad pool, so that's neat. They got a copycat Caitlyn who's literally alting with Caitlyn's alt, and then we got someone who looks like Ezreal riding a wolf, so surely he must be a little different in this game. Oh, never mind, that's his alt. So, uh, yeah. I mean, even the dragon or whatever it is spawns exactly the same. Anyways, as far as the gameplay went, I mean, it looks fine, but it's League of Legends. It's so similar, I honestly don't know how to rate it. I guess it's good, but you might as well just play League at that point. 3 out of 10. Alright, number 4, we got Heroes and Empires. Okay, so this isn't actually a MOBA either, it's instead a mobile auto battler, but man, this is weird. Okay, so right off the bat, characters-wise, we got a little copying going on. We got Pig Rider as Sejuani, Swift as Olaf, Fellow as Vlad, Logan as Corky, who was actually previously known as Lorky, Aids as Ryze, Leonidas 
as Udir wearing a Warwick hat. And this, this is apparently Zack. Jesus, what did they do to you? Even his ability is to leap into the air. Anyways, the list kind of goes on, but I have to include this because my God, they even have their own Yumi. This is Midu and her ability is, you guessed it, to latch onto other heroes. Nice. I mean, there honestly isn't too much to say about this game other than it's, it's not great. The gameplay is okay, I guess. I mean, it's an auto battler, so most of the time you just watch things fight for you. But yeah, that's about it. I think the most entertaining part, honestly, was just seeing the champion knockoffs because some of them were pretty bad. In fact, some of them were so bad that they had to get rid of them because it was a little too close to the original, like uh, QQ Trox, for instance. I mean, hey, at least they skipped a few letters down in Ningo BB Trox. Overall, I'll give the game 0.5 out of 10. Would have been 1 out of 10 if QQ Trox was still in it. And last but not least, we have Mobile Legends. I had to save this one for last because it's probably the most well-known and the biggest knockoff out of all of them. In fact, it's so big, it even has its own knockoffs as well. Yes, the knockoffs have knockoffs. There are actually a ton of different games that take after Mobile Legends like Honor of Kings, Heroes Arena, Arena of Valor, and Heroes Evolved. Also, I'm pretty sure that's just League of Legends teleport icon that they yoinked. Anyways, Mobile Legends itself is your typical MOBA, but what makes it such a big knockoff is mostly their champions. A strong majority of them are just slightly modified from League along with their concepts and abilities. As a matter of fact, some things were so similar to League that Riot even sued them. Not once, but multiple times. The first time they actually won and received $2.9 million, which sounds like a lot to us peasants, but to a billion dollar company, that doesn't mean much. Also, it really wasn't much to Mobile Legends either, considering they're also worth a few billion dollars. In other words, cheating apparently does prosper and your teacher from high school was just wrong. Now, what's actually insane about Mobile Legends is that it's ironically way bigger than Wild Rift, which is also why rioters are so adamant about suing them and getting their game taken down. I mean, it's pretty clear to see which is more popular by just looking at Google Trends. But I mean, this kind of makes sense because Mobile Legends has been ripping off League for years now, and Wild Rift is still fairly new. Funny enough, Tencent was trying to get Riot to make a mobile game for years, but they said they wanted to take their time, and by the time they released it, everyone was already playing Mobile Legends. In other words, it looks like they're taking their time strategy may have just cost them most of the Chinese player base, as well as billions of dollars. Oops. Riot actually recently even tried to sue them again, bringing up a bunch of similarities between the two games, like ripping off KDA Ari, ripping off Zack, Leona, Brom, and even the Dark Star skin line. Anyways, the list kind of goes on, but the case was ultimately dismissed because Moonton, the company that runs Mobile Legends, is based out of China. And Riot has tried to sue them in China before, but since China's copyright laws are next to nothing, it didn't go through. In fact, not only that, but Moonton actually sued Riot, or Riot's parent company, Tencent, for slander and defamation. They claimed Tencent had spread false information that was inconsistent with the facts and hindered the cooperation between the plaintiff and relevant partners. And funny enough, they actually won and received 222,000 yuan, or about $33,000. Well, let's be honest, it really probably wasn't about the money to them, it was more of a statement than anything. Anyways, as far as the game itself goes, I gotta say, it's actually pretty good. The animations are pretty nice, and the game is fairly smooth. I mean, it looks like a knockoff to us since we're all so used to League, but it's really not that bad. I can honestly see why people who've played Mobile Legends for years didn't just switch over once Wild Rift was actually released, because it's really not a terrible game. And I mean, think about it, would you really want to swap games after getting used to everything in the game, like champions and abilities for years? Not to mention all the skins and perks people probably have on their accounts. I mean, if I was in their shoes, I probably wouldn't swap over either just to play the same game with different colors, while also having to start from square one. Now, with that being said, if I'm a new player to both and had to pick between the two, I would definitely pick Wild Rift, but that's just me. My guess is that Wild Rift may slowly grow in popularity over time, but it'll probably take years. That is, if Riot can't successfully sue them before then, which they probably can't. Anyways, I'll give this game a solid 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye. A giant shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Stefan, Noctec, and James. A massive Massive shout out to Set Rye for being a tier 4 patron. Thank you to Hegel for becoming a member, and thank you to all my other incredible patrons as well.